Hey guys, Mike with Long Range Lilies here today to talk to you about how do you measure your performance against the performances of your peers and the, the shooters that you're trying to catch, the guys that are better than you. Um, when I have these conversations at matches, uh, it's generally, you know, a bunch of dudes standing around um, in between stages or whatever, and we'll have these conversations. And what I find is that the camp generally breaks down into two, right? Uh, some people will judge their performances off of their placement at the match, first through fifth or 30th or whatever. And other guys like to measure their um, percentage of match winner. Um, and when I say guys, it's a unisex term for everybody that's you know shooting a rifle at these matches and I don't want to offend anybody. Uh, maybe I've just been in the Pacific Northwest too long, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, like I was saying, so the way the PRS does scoring um, is if the winner gets 100% of the um, points available, so the winner goes out, shoots, whatever they score, that is 100%, and then you are racked and stacked off of your percentage of the match winner. So for easy math, if the match winner went out and shot 100 points available and I shot 85 points available, so of the 80, 100 targets I only hit 85, then I would get 85 points. I would do 85% of the match winner who shot 100. And then what the PRS does is they take those top three match points that you got in a match and that is your season standing. Uh, it's a great system. It's been around for a long time. Um, it works really well in determining a season winner. Uh, if you go to the PRS website, which is a really great website, it does all this stuff for you. If you join, get a PRS membership, your scores will be tracked and you can have access to all this stuff too. Um, and right now you've got Ben Gossett, Morgan King, Clay Blackheader, and Austin Bushman all at 300 points. So if you're asking which metric I think you should use, I think that the percentage of match winner is a far better indicator of your performance either at a match or on the season than your placement is. Um, and why do I say that? So if you look at, we'll just use me for example. Um, so if we go to my scores, these are my scores for the season, uh, 88, 80, 87, 84, 73 uh, at the Hornady PRC, which is a super hard match for me, 84 and 81. And when I say for me, I mean for everybody. That's just a tough match, but it's a fantastic match. If you haven't shot it, I, I highly recommend you do it. But the point I'm making with my scores is I average anywhere between, it looks like 80% and 88% is kind of my range, right, of the match winner. Um, and those are East Coast matches, West Coast matches, and everything in between. I think this is a better indicator of where I stack up against, say, a Morgan King, who's at 300 points. Uh, a good example of that is if you look at my Alderbrook um, Pro Series two-day here, July 16th, I have a fifth place finish. So a fifth place finish is very, very good. Um, you, you know, you're on the podium, you're getting a trophy. And it's really easy to look at that fifth place finish and kind of get a false expectation of or false indication of how you did at the match. I think if anybody who was there that remembers talking to me at that match, I felt like I wasn't shooting well, um, but I came in fifth place, right? So I think that if you go back to this list here of the top, you know, however many shooters in the PRS, if the top 20 had been there, I would have been 21st. Um, I would not have been fifth because that score, that fifth place finish is less than an indication of how I shot and more of an indication of who wasn't there. Um, if you go back to my score, I shot at that match 85%, right in the heart of my predicted scoring as it stands right now at my current ability level and my current level of training. This is how I'm performing. So I think that the percentage of match winner is just a far, far better indicator of how you're gonna perform than your placement, like your third, fifth, you know, in my case, 49th, whatever. <laughs> I think <laughs> a lot of you guys um, have this expectation that I'm like a really great shooter. Uh, any of the guys at the top of this list that I pointed out earlier would say I'm not, um, and they wouldn't necessarily be wrong, but I'm working on it. Um, but I think that if you're going to progress, you need to be honest about your performance, right? I am 
typically 85% of the match winner. Uh, I think it would be super easy to fall into kind of this mental pitfall of, oh, I fifth place, like that's where I should be all the time. And then I go to all these hard matches where the top 20 guys are there and I'm never close to fifth again. Uh, and it would be super easy to get down on myself and frustrated and say I'm underperforming when the fact of the matter is I'm right at where I'm at for my ability level right now. And if I want to get better, if I want better placements, I got to find whatever it is that's holding me back and change it. In my personal case, it's mental mistakes on stages. Um, but, you know, that's a whole different video or series of videos that we can do later. So... Percentage of match winner, while I think it's fantastic, um, I still think that there is a better way to determine where you, your predicted level of success against, you know, the field. Um, I wouldn't necessarily change anything that the PRS is doing right now, right? I feel like this system works. Uh, it's easy for shooters to wrap their heads around. The math in it is easy. It's done a great job so far. I haven't seen a flaw in it yet that, you know, really shakes up the season. Um, you know, West Coast guys will say that, you know, you get more points on the East Coast, whatever. Uh, that's a totally different subject that I think I've already covered and I don't want to get into here. But what I'm getting at is if you look at the PRS, it's in the end a very, very new sport. It hasn't been around that long. If you look at sports like you know, baseball, hockey, basketball, whatever, chess, another great example. These games or sports have been around for a long time. So I think we need to kind of look to other sports and see what they do right and see what they do wrong and take what works and get rid of what doesn't. One of the things that chess does right is they base their rankings off of what's called an ELO rating system, ELO. Uh, and basically what the, EL, the ELO rating system is, or the ELO, is it's a prediction of your chances of success against a particular opponent. So uh, their rating, I think it goes up to 3,000. I could be wrong on that. Don't quote me. Um, so if you have like a grandmaster who's like a 3,000 and then a, you know, a, a good guy who's at 2,000, um, and I don't know the ratings off the top of my head. I apologize, guys. This should have done more research. But it will be able to predict that, you know, out of a thousand times, a hundred times, whatever, how many times that lower rank guy would beat the upper rank guy. Um, and let me kind of explain that better. So I have a, a handy dandy whiteboard here. Let's see if I can get this on camera. And basically of the points available in a match, you've got zero and a hundred, right? So let's say Morgan King, who's one of the 300 guys who's at the top of there, he typically shoots, you know, let's say if there's 200 points of, or 100 points available, he's going to shoot 90% of the total points available. To my knowledge, nobody has cleaned a national two-day match yet. So Morgan has the potential to do that if he has a great day. And But the majority of the time, he's going to be, his performance, his bell curve of performance is going to be somewhere in this region. Yeah, if he has a great day, he could shoot and clean a national match if everything comes together for him. And then, you know, he potentially could have a bad day. And then if you take a guy like me, who's consistently like 85% of Morgan, so I'm somewhere probably in here, 60, 75, maybe percent of total points available, and I'm just making that up, I'd have to research my numbers to, to see where it came out. I'm typically going to be kind of right in this range here. Now, if you'll notice, our two bell curves overlap. Like Morgan could have a really bad day and I could have a career day and, you know, theoretically I can beat Morgan. But the reality is based off our current performance trends, Morgan is going to beat me the majority of the time. And by majority, I mean a lot. It's going to be very, very rare that this happens. Um, I think if you were to ask Morgan, he would have to say his gun would have to explode. But, you know, that's again another topic. But when you take shooters and let's say you take all the matches for a season and you see how every shooter did against every other individual shooter, now you've got a really great uh, basis of comparison on how you stand or your expected level of performance. And you can see whether you had a great match or a, an okay match or whatever based around who was there. So I've had this conversation a lot with a lot of different people. And one of the shooters that I, I talked to took it upon himself to do the research on the ELO system and to make this spreadsheet. So I'm gonna pull it up here now. 
This shooter wishes to remain anonymous, and I'm going to honor his wishes because he put a lot of effort into this thing. Um, what he did was he took the ELO rating system and he made it on a thousand point scale um, from zero to a thousand, and he ranked all the shooters. He inputted all the data and who beat who and where everybody racked and stacked and shook out uh, for all the shooters that had five or more PRS matches. And the reason we he did five was you need some sort of basis of data, right? If you shoot one match, that could be an anomaly. And here is where the ratings shook out. You've got Morgan King at a 976 out of a thousand. And from there it goes down. And I'm just going to scroll all the way through this because I know when this video comes out, I'm going to get a million texts of you guys asking me to send you the spreadsheet. I'm not going to do that. Why? Because the person who made it asked me not to. Um, they're going to continue to update it. Again, this is only for the 2022 season. So as I scroll down this list, we get to me, I'm down here at a 728 out of a thousand. Um, and then as you go down, so if we're looking at this sheet, everybody below me, if we were to shoot a match together, I should be. The further their number is down from me, uh, the more often I should beat them. The further the number is above me, the less likely it is that I'm ever going to beat them at a match. Um, and then as you do matches, let's say, you know, I do beat one of these guys ahead of me. Let's say I, I pick Tate Streeter up here. Tate's at a 749. I'm at a 728. If I beat Tate in a match, his ranking would go down a little bit and mine would go up. And that's the way it works. And then when you do that against everybody that's at a match, now you've got some really good numbers to work with. So I'm going to continue to scroll down this list just to make sure everybody's there. In the left-hand column is the number of matches they've shot, then the name, and then their rating. Like uh, Oren Lewis shot 11 matches already this year. Like, bro, do you even have a job? Anyway, um, I'm saying that mostly out of jealousy. I love you, man. Um, so we'll scroll down here to the bottom of the list. At, and this person, five matches, Cage Gables. Uh, has the lowest ranking so far this year. Now, obviously this is one year, you have to have shot five matches. The number of people that have shot five matches is very, very low. Um, so this data isn't perfect yet. But the more you add to it, the more numbers, the more matches, the more everything, the more refined it gets and you can start to really, really shake out where you rank against your peers. Um, I think this is a fantastic tool. I think it's going to get a lot better. I look forward to seeing what he comes up with. Um, the person that made this lit, this spreadsheet, uh, his name is on this list and it's way above mine. Uh, and I'm not going to get into who that was yet. So when they're ready to announce themselves, they will. I just wanted to highlight the work and show what's, what's out there. Um, so guys, I, again, I'm not advocating to change the scoring the way scoring is done in the PRS. This is just another tool, uh, very similar. There's another thing, Sheldon Nallis, one of the West Coast shooters, uh, does a spreadsheet every year that's also very good. That gives a lot of data, a lot of numbers. If you're a statistics-minded person, if you're always looking to see where you shake out, this is just another tool in your toolbox. Um, guys, if you like what you see, make sure you like and subscribe. Thank you for, for watching. Thank you for listening. If you have questions, Feel free to hit me up if they're math questions. I may or may not be able to answer them, um, but you know, I'll do my best. So guys, I hope you like the video. I hope you like what's out there. I hope this sparks some conversation and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys out there, hopefully at the finale. We'll see you soon.